I came of age between integration and black power. At the time, integration was proffered as the solution to America's race problem. Integration would help whites see black people as individual human beings instead of outrageous stereotypes. With integration, we'd live in a colors of Benetton America as harmonious as a Coca-Cola commercial. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Even I balked at the perceived confrontational approach of Black Panthers. So how to convince white people that a melting pot of equality was America's promise and future? I decided to work tirelessly for brotherhood. Multicolored hands grasped in solemn swaying to, we shall overcome, was the goal. I spent hour after hour in earnest rap sessions at the Encampment for Citizenship and the National Conference of Christians and Jews, where I was the director of the Brooklyn Youth Group. Integration was so embedded in my belief system that I married outside my race. We starry-eyed newlyweds would personally forge the multicultural melting pot. Our legacy would be the solidarity of a diverse yet peaceful America. Our hearts beat passionately to that tune, and so we believed. What I didn't know at that time, and possibly even now, could fill an entire universe, but I have learned a few things. Idealistic young love is romantic, but the way your heart flutters at 15 may be to a different drum at 50. It had been a successful marriage producing a beautiful son. There was no recrimination around race, just personalities. <laughs> it was an oddly amicable divorce until his new white wife insisted I be iced out of extended family events. That included our now adult son. Her motive to deny me interaction with in-laws who'd known me for 30 years was suspicious and probably race related. My pressing financial situation as a divorcee was a terrifying change in status. Older black woman fading out of the job market in the permanently precarious entertainment industry. <laughs> Luckily, I found an affordable apartment in a neglected Bed-Stuy brownstone not far from where I grew up. Every day being single for the first time in my entire life was an extraordinary adjustment. 10 years later, just when I thought I had a handle on things, I was gentrified out of the burrow of my birth. My financials were a patchwork quilt of hope, ignorance, and my 800 plus credit score. I could not afford a New York City apartment anymore, but my resources should cover a modest co-op. When the seventh bank refused me an $80,000 mortgage with a reliable solvent co-signer, I knew the burn I felt was due to racism. Hearing about redlining, bias in real estate, and prejudice in banking is a completely different thing from experiencing it. There is a reason I do not live in one of the first three areas of my choice. I've come to understand that my color influences how I am treated, be it by police, doctors, teachers, bankers, you name it. Or, or how about being followed around in every store at my age? Racism is a given in a, this American landscape, now a country in full turmoil. Today, a group swaying with hands grasped and singing, we shall overcome, is against coronavirus protocols. 
the rise in domestic terrorism has taught me I may never teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. As COVID-19 and white supremacy duel to be the boss of America, my values have changed profoundly. My goal now is simply to stay alive.